Three solutions to the social media idealism problem. Why chasing the next platform is futile. Originally published November 13th, 2024 by Paul O'Flaherty on pauloflaherty.com. I get it. X slash Twitter is evil. Meta is bad. Zuckerberg is clueless about his user base. Threads is overly censored. Mastodon is too difficult for regular users to grasp. Blue Sky is Twitter without Elon, but nobody is there. I wrote less than a month ago, spurred by the latest wave of Twitter refugees to other platforms, about how most people have forgotten that social media is supposed to be about being social, about being part of a community and having fun. That the features of the platform don't matter as long as it adequately supports the growth and enjoyment of the community you're involved with. Unfortunately, the shiny syndrome is real, and logging into threads presents me with little more than a stream full of people talking about how awesome Blue Sky is, and how it has X, Y, or Z feature and it's Twitter 1.0 again. I'm moving, they proclaim, along with, I'm thinking of moving, should I move? and other such nonsensical statements that are both a declaration of intent and an attempt at engagement bait. FYI, I have a Blue Sky account. It's not revolutionary, it's not all that, but I like it. It's just getting headlines right now because it's gone from 9 to 14.5 million users during the US election. All of these people are trying to recreate a sense of community that they had elsewhere, and will never be able to do so because despite being driven by ideological problems with any given platform, unless your entire community moves to the new platform and doesn't fragment in the process, it will never be the same. And that's the problem. The shiny syndrome is mostly driven by whatever ideological reason prompted us to leave a platform in the first place. We left Twitter because it's a hateful shithole and well, Musk. Remember when this happened with Facebook as well in the late 2010s with with people deactivating their personal accounts and vowing to be anywhere but Facebook? We tried to rebuild and find the same sense of community on threads or wherever to follow the same people, but they're not all there and probably never will be. Looking at you, Stephen King. Yet, instead of recognizing that things feel different because our community doesn't exist on the new platform in the same way, We look at feature parity and other trivial things and latch onto them as something to blame, or chase from platform to platform as we attempt to regain the glory days. Blue Sky is young, it's Twitter 1.0, it's got near feature parity, it hasn't got advertising, it's not run by that arsehole oligarch, and it's got a small user base, so we can start fresh. We can build again free from the ideological issues stemming from big tech, meta, musk and the like. Except it will last all of about 10 minutes. You won't recapture the feeling of community you had, and if you do, it will be fleeting. The platform will grow, users will flood in, forcing the need for monetization, which coupled with the large amounts of people devolving into complete dicks due to lack of accountability, and the need to pay bills to keep the lights on, will mean more moderation. And just like that, your shiny platform on a hill will become another sprawling hive of scum and villainy or it will collapse under its own weight and the inability to monetize sufficiently without alienating its user base. Either way, you'll get disillusioned. And much like the meerkats in those ads, start eyeballing the next set of shiny objects that may temporarily fit your ideological needs, but never truly fulfill your sense of community. So what do we do? How can we build a community that satisfies our ideological needs and allows us to build a community we can enjoy? As I see it, there are only three solutions. Before talking about the solutions, let's get on the same page first. It's a given that you're never going to be able to recapture what you've had before. No matter how great or bad the next thing is, it will always be different. Come to terms with that. Ready? Let's continue. The first is the easiest solution. Suck it up. If you think for more than a few seconds about it, you'll find an ideological reason not to be on every platform. So just find the community you want to be part of and engage with them where they are. Don't worry about the platform features because as a whole, the community doesn't or they wouldn't be there. The second is a little harder but still relatively easy. Be everywhere. Follow the people and creators you like on whatever platform they're on. 
that presents things in a way that feels good to you. Are they only on Instagram? Fine, follow them there. Someone else you like is on Blue Sky? Follow them there. Engage with people on all platforms. You'll eventually find communities that you like and fall into usage patterns that suit you. The third solution is the most difficult, but also the most rewarding. Build your own platform that nobody can take away from you. Having your own blog or your own domain is a great start for this. You can publish your own content, video, images, music, written word, etc. without fear of moderation or being buried under a deluge of other users' posts. Your followers can engage with you anywhere you choose to publish a link to your content. You can contribute content that is more than a proverbial soundbite to the communities you engage with no matter where that community calls home. People can engage with you on your site, and you can engage with and reach them in so many ways that social networks simply don't afford you control over or opportunity to do. You'll need to start thinking about social networks differently. You'll need to start seeing them as fleeting tools that can be used to build community around a place that you control. I've been harping on about this for decades. With your own domain, you can have your own space on the web where you are in control and you own everything. Nobody can take it away. Nobody can change the rules. It's your identity and your place. I wrote that last paragraph more than 15 years ago when the big thing was Facebook vanity earls. Your own site gives you the ultimate control. And when you combine plugins with modern content management systems, the possibilities are endless. The OG Dave Weiner's thoughts on bringing back blog roles via live updating OPML files that you can subscribe to, which create an ad hoc social network, are exciting. Finally, I want to give you a bonus fourth option. Go touch grass and hang out with real friends in real life. Social networks are very much inauthentic, bad for your mental health, and full of garbage, influencers, and scammers with their own agenda, and is on life support in many senses. Your life will be so much better just reading the news in an RSS reader and discussing it with real people over a cup of coffee. Hi, this is Paulo Flaherty, and I want to thank you for checking out my podcast. If you liked this episode, please share it with a friend. It's the best way to support what I do. Also, please consider subscribing and leaving a review on your podcast platform of choice. Thanks again for listening.